on surface. If your tank is over here on in, it means that you're working underground. So as you can see right now, most people are working up here on surface, and Jaden, one of my colleagues, is actually underground right now. So since I'm bringing you guys down, what I have to do is I have to go find my tag. So it's just right there on out. I take it and I move it on over here to in. So now my supervisor, when they walk by, they will know that I am working underground. So talk about some of the tools and jobs that we had down here in the mines back in the late 1800s. And I'll start off by talking about the most important tool of all. That of course was the candle. So the ore we're looking at here, out of it you would get the boat a fistful of nickel and copper. Now it wasn't always that simple, and that's because sometimes they like to send down too much muck at once, and whenever that happened, it ended up getting jammed up in there. Now this happened so frequently that they devised a solution to the problem. So what they would do is they would take a metal rod just like this, they would climb up the ladder there onto the platform, and once you're in position, so you'd be standing there just like this, you would simply just poke away at all of the muck that would be jammed up in there. Now, it's not exactly the safest thing in the world because you could poke away and it slides down and you don't get your arm out of the way quick enough and then you don't have an arm anymore. So in this uh, we'll underground scenario, we're doing three stops. The first one we just finished was from the 1890s. And now we're going into the 1950s and finally into current day some of the muck that is left behind after a blast. So you're going to notice we have a big pile of muck back here. Now that break back there is actually connected to the slusher here using these cables. And what we do is we use a pulley system. So if you look at the back here, you'll see we've got this pulley back here. You pull that break along with all the muck underneath it back away from the wall. What you're going to do is you're going to pull everything so it's over the ore chute. And once it's over the chute, the muck is just going to go down the chute and it's going to land on the level below. Down the chute, it can end up landing right here in the bucket of this machine, which is called the mucker. So once your bucket here is nice and full, what you can do is you are going to bring the bucket forward using the lever and you are going to launch all of the muck into an ore cart. Once the ore cart is nice and full, you just push it along the tracks and dump it down another chute. You continue the process until you're at the very bottom of the mine. Blasting area. Now before we do the blast, I'm going to uh, kind of really briefly explain all the components on the, on the wall here. So you're going to notice we've got this big long wire here. So it extends all the way across the wall to that side, and then it comes all the way back over to here, and then it's going to go all the way back over to the other side. So we call this the ignition core. This is what we actually like when we're ready to do the blast. What the ignition cord does is it is going to connect these things here that we call charges. And the charges are just the holes that are filled up with dynamite. So what you do is you put your dynamite in the holes, you cover the hole up with clay, and then you take your fuse from one of the sticks of dynamite and you attach it to the ignition cord. Once they're all hooked up like that, all these charges will eventually go off. Blast goes off. If we don't drill the cutout, the rock is going to want to come out this way and we're not going to get a nice clean blast all the way through. So we make sure we drill it all the way through to the end of the holes here. The reason why we only drill the cut once just over here is because once this area here has been blasted out, uh, you have a nice big empty space for all the rock over here and down here to go into. So there's no need to uh, waste your time drilling that stuff out. And now, what we are going to do next is we are going to be doing a blast on the underground tour. So before we do that, I'm just going to go over some of the protocols. Now when you do a blast, you're obviously not going to be standing right in front of the blast area. That's just simply not safe at all. 
So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be heading around the corner after I turn the lights on. Now I stay back here and light the fuse, so no, I don't have to pick anyone to do that. I'll do it myself. <laughs> and uh, before I actually light the fuse, I have to make sure everyone's safe because you never know, some things can happen sometimes. So to make sure everyone is safe, what I do is I shout to everyone, are we all clear? Now once everybody is uh, safely in position just around the corner there, and once everybody's ready for the blast, all you guys have to do is just shout all clear back at me, and then uh, I'll know when I can light the fuse. what's going on down there, flat and dry. Now, the reason why a lot of machines like this are remote controlled from up on surface is safety. So obviously the less people that you have underground, uh, the safer it's going to be, the less likely there is going to be. 